Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. John's. It is a joy to see each and every one of you here in worship with us this morning. We'd like to invite you to pick up one of the attendance registries that should be at the end of each of your pews, pass them to your neighbor, and then return them back to the center aisle. This is a good opportunity if you've had any updates to your contact information to jot that down for us so that we make sure that we can update our records. It's also an opportunity, if you're visiting with us this morning, to share either a physical or an email address with us so that we might reach out to you this week and thank you for being in worship with us. Welcome Home Wednesdays are back. It is not too late to join in with the Connect group and to join us for supper. Uh, Supper reservations are generally due by 9 p.m. on Sundays. If you happen to forget, we do have some extras, so... Um, Go ahead and and come on, and we will make sure that we get you fed on Wednesday evenings. Um, The sign-ups are in the um, Touch Base Tuesday email. If you're not receiving those, go to the church website, and there'll be a pop-up window where you can sign up for those. Quest will meet at 5 o'clock tonight to continue their series on justice, and confirmation will meet at 4 Please dust off your name tags and start wearing them to church again if you are not already. It is very helpful to Jan and to Larry to have the name tags, um, to get to know those of you that they have not already um, become friends with. So if you would do that, if you've lost your name tag, you are not the only one. Um, Call the church office or see a staff person and we will help you get another name tag. This afternoon, there is a free organ concert at 3 p.m. here in the sanctuary. Um, It is featuring four organists, including our own Dr. Timothy Bellflowers. Please join us as we welcome musicians from several area churches in this community event that is sponsored by the Rock Hill Music Club. You may have noticed that some of our church basketball players are here in worship with us this morning dressed in their t-shirts. If you are a basketball player or one of our coaches, I'd like to invite you to please stand for a moment of recognition. You need to know that St. John's was awarded the Good Sportsmanship Award from the CBA, which means that of all the churches that sponsored teams, St. John's was chosen as the church whose teams most consistently displayed the best sportsmanship throughout the season. So we're, we're very proud of them for that. That says a lot about our players, about our families, and about our coaches. Um, so congratulations to all of our athletes and to our coaches for that special designation. Right, let us continue our worship together.
Please rise in body or in spirit for this morning's call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. O oh God, my God, we seek you. Our souls thirst for you. Our spirits long for you. For we are parched and weary in these desert times, these wilderness places. But your love, O oh God, is better even than life. Our words will praise you, our actions bless you. Let us seek the Lord where God may be found. Call upon the Holy One who is near. We will bless you as long as we live. We will lift up our hands and call on your name. Our opening hymn is Come Ye Sinners, Poor and Needy, on page 340 of your hymnal. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die first to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. So let us acknowledge our failure and disobedience and return to the Lord with penitence and faith. God of mercy, 
We long to come when you call, yet often we do not. When we are most afraid, we fail to turn to you. When we are most afraid, we do not always think we can turn to you. When we are lost, hurting, in pain, we fail to realize how much we suffer. We refuse to ask for help. We lash out at others. We numb our hearts. We hide. Forgive us. But you, O God, are faithful. You see us and know us and love us as we are. In times of trial, you show us the way through. Receive us once more and have mercy on us as we seek your presence. Help us place our trust in the grace of your heart and help us begin again. Amen. Anything we have done, God knows already. Anything we have hidden, God has already seen. God's love for us and grace to us are higher than we have imagined, deeper than we have guessed. Before we have asked, God's mercies are already given. For God does not waste our struggles, but uses them to grow joy. Thanks be to God. Our Old Testament lesson comes from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Hear now these words. The Lord had said to Abram, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God makes peace within us, let us claim it. God makes peace between us, let us share it. So let us greet one another as a sign of God's peace and Christ's friendship by saying, the peace of Christ be with you, and we respond, and also with you. Let us offer one another signs of God's peace. Please greet your neighbors. At this time, we invite our children to come forward for a children's moment with Emily Bell. Good morning. Happy Sunday. How are you? Good. I have a question. Have you ever woken up maybe one Saturday morning and your parents said, all right, let's go. We've got somewhere to go today. And you didn't know where that place was? Has that ever happened to you? No? How did, how did that make you feel if it did happen to you? Excited and scared at the same time. It's crazy you can feel two things at once. 
You can be excited to see where you're going, but nervous. How long will it take? Will it be fun? What other questions would you have if you were going somewhere that you didn't know? Confused? Is this the right way? Does my mom even know where she's going? Like you said to me this week. Bo told me this week we were going somewhere new, and he was like, this does not look right. (laughs) And I was like, well, you've never been here before, but I got directions. Don't worry. Sometimes it can feel that way when God tells us that we are going somewhere for him. We can be confused. We can be scared. But God has a plan for us. And it is tricky when we need to follow that plan and not our own. Yes, ma'am. It is hard when other people are going places and you can't go. That's another feeling that you might have, a little disappointment there. But I bet wherever you are is where you're supposed to be, right? All right, will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for your promises. And thank you for your journeys and adventures. Help us to go where you lead us and be the light and love of Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you can follow me. This morning and throughout the week, we'd like to ask that you continue to remember in your prayers L.J. Barnes, the six-year-old great-grandson of Becky Hughes, who has now been placed in hospice care. Please pray for the peace that passes all understanding for L.J. and for his family. Continue to pray for Beth Bramlett as she continues her chemo treatments for metastatic melanoma. Please continue to pray for John and for the kids as they take care of her and care for one another. Remember Glenda Span Hennett, our intern from last summer who is uh, undergoing treatment for breast cancer. And continue to pray for Pastor David uh, while he's on his medical leave and as he continues to see different physicians. Of course, we pray for peace in our world, in our nation, and on our own communities. Will you pray with me? We thank you, God, for coming to us as a neighbor, a stranger, an immigrant, binding our wounds and carrying us to safety so that we might love you with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and welcome the stranger, loving our neighbor as ourselves. You have given us, in your word, the stories of persons who needed to leave their homelands, Abraham. Sarah, Ruth, Moses. Help us to remember that when we speak of immigrants and refugees, we speak of Christ, in the one who has had no place to lay his head, and in the least of his brothers and sisters, you come to us again, a stranger seeking refuge. We confess that often we turn away. You have chosen that the life of Jesus be filled with events of unplanned travel and flight from enemies. You have shown us through the modeling of Jesus how we are called to relate to persons from different nations and cultures. You have called us to be teachers of your word. We ask you, O God, to open our minds and hearts to the challenge and the invitation to model your perfect example of love as shown to us through Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
As the ushers come forward this morning, let us be reminded that giving is not a casual act. It relates God's work to our work. Peter writes, as each has received a gift, employ it for one another as good stewards of God's varied grace, that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Let us give as people whose work is inextricably linked to God's great works of creation, redemption, and empowerment.
Let us pray. God, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for those who give. We ask that you would take these gifts, multiply them like you did the loaves and fishes so long ago, that they would reach many for your kingdom. We ask it in the name of your Son, the Christ. Amen.
Will you join me in prayer? Now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts and minds be acceptable in thy sight. For thou, O oh Lord, art our rock and our redeemer forever. Amen. I promised Brian I wouldn't cause him too much technical trouble, but I don't stay in the box very well. Jan will be nicer next week. She, she tends to stay a little closer. Um, some of you may remember, years ago on Good Morning America, there were a couple of ministers of different kinds, a, a Catholic priest and a rabbi, who were called the God Squad. The rabbi was a guy by the name of Mark Gelman. Now, uh, Rabbi Gelman would, has written some books of Midrash. Midrash in Jewish tradition is uh, stories about the stories in the Bible. In other words, rather than writing a scholarly commentary, they write stories that illustrate the stories and you can see things in a different way. One of my favorite books was Rabbi Gelman's small book, Does God Have a Big Toe? They were meant to be stories that were uh, understandable to children as well as adults. And one of my favorite stories in that book was called Finding the Right Man. He said, I imagine that Abram wasn't the first person that God tried to call. He lists some of Abram's, the, the scripture lists some of Abram's ancestors, so he chose some of those names. God called to Eber and said, Eber, I want you to leave the country you know. I want you to leave your people and your father's house, and I want you to go to a place that I'll show you. I'll make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse. And from you, from your name will come blessings for the whole world. Eber said, um, who, who, who's talking? It's God. Which God are you? What do you mean, which God? I'm the only God. No, what are you God of? God of everything. Oh, come on. There is no God of everything. Everybody knows this. There's a God of the sun and a God of the moon and a God of the rain and uh, a God of cats and a God of dogs and a God of spiders. Let's see. What doesn't have a God yet? I don't think bullfrogs have a God. Why don't you decide to be God of bullfrogs? And, and we'll keep talking about this, but Heber didn't hear from God anymore after that. Another generation along came a guy named Peleg. And God said to Peleg, Peleg, leave your country, leave your family, leave your father's house and go to a land that I will show you and I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. Those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse. And from you will come a blessing for the entire world. And Pelic said, um, 
I'm, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't see you. Well, no, you can't see me because I'm a spirit. I'm not visible. I don't know about that. I, I was in the temple of the sun the other day, and they have a nice statue of the God of the sun that you can, you can see and you can bow down and pray to. Um, and, and I know in the temple of the God of cats, there's this beautiful statue of a, of a goddess cat, and, and I, I can see it and I can bow down. Why don't you go to a good idol maker, have them make an image of you, and then we can talk. Pelican God didn't talk again. Another generation or two goes by, and there's a young man by the name of Surig, and he's out, out working in the fields, and he hears a voice say, Surig. I want you to leave your country, leave your family, leave your father's house, and go to a land that I will show you. And I will bless you, and I'll make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse. And from you will come blessings for the entire world. And Zarek says, um, okay, that's nice. What's in it for me? What do you mean, what's in it for you? I, I just told you. No, no, no. It's nice that people are going to think of my name and, and, and feel blessed and all that, but, but what do I get? Can I have the, all the money in the world? Okay, maybe half the money in the world? Saragin, God didn't talk again after that. And finally, God comes to Abram. He says, Abram, I want you to leave your country, leave your kindred, leave your father's house, and go to a land that I will show you, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and I will make of you a great nation. Those who bless you, I will bless. Those who curse you, I will curse. And from you will come blessings for the entire world. Abram said, okay, we'll pack and leave. God was kind of astounded. He said, you're not worried that you don't know who I am yet? No, not really. Don't want anything for yourself? Uh, can I take my nephew Lot with me? And God said, okay. God realized he'd found the right person to do the right thing at the right time. And God knows that doesn't happen all the time. Well, why do I share that story with you today? I chose this, by the way, before I knew that uh, Bishop Williman was going to preach last week on a later part of Abram's story. Kind of a coincidence, I guess. Maybe it's a God thing. Maybe we need to hear Paul stories right now. But you're wondering, I know you are, if God has sent you the right people. Jan and I have been among you for a couple of years, and a year of that time we were shut down and, and not able to worship together, and you don't know us very well, and we don't know you very well yet. That's why we've asked you to wear name tags for the next, next month or so, so we can get to know you a little better. And you're wondering, can they do this? Well, I'll tell you, we were both called to ministry in different ways at different times. And we answered that call, and we've flown a few of these things in our time. So we promise we'll do our best to steer this craft in the right direction. And um, if major pieces start to fall off or anything, we think we can get it on the ground safely. It'll be all right. I know there's been a lot of upheaval over the past couple of months. Those of you who were here last week saw some things that probably frightened you. I did talk with Pastor David last uh, Sunday afternoon and this week. He said it was, looked worse than it was. He's doing a lot better. We'll continue to pray 
for his health to come back so that he can come and lead you as your full-time pastor. In the meantime, we'll do our best to guide the thing in the right direction. It's funny, uh, we've been among you a short time, and, and for the past several months I've been working with the staff as the uh, praise band leader and worship leader at 9 o'clock. So those folks know me as the crazy guy that wears a Hawaiian shirt and plays guitar. Um, they don't know how I'm going to do it this yet. We'll figure it out. But I can tell you that it's probably not going to be that difficult for us because we are surrounded by really great, effective people. Every Tuesday for the past several months, I've, months I've, I've been able to sit down and, and meet with your staff, and I am amazed at their capability, their talent, and their energy, and their gifts individually and collectively. Since we decided that we would uh, offer this interim to David, I've been meeting with your lay leadership in the various committees, and Jan has been meeting with other committees. We've kind of split it up to try to play to our strengths, and, and um, every one of the leadership that I have sat and talked with over the past few weeks have been impressive, outstanding people who realize that they too have experienced a, a call to do what they do. As Bishop Willeman said last week, call is not limited just to pastors. Everyone is called by God in some way. Some of us answer that call and some of us maybe argue with it. Some of us maybe argue with it for a while and then answer it. That's kind of my story. But all of us are called to something. It may be something that, that really seems big and you go, ah, I'm not sure if I can do that. It may be something that you hear the call and you think, well, that's not much. I had a lady in my first church. Um, it was a little inner city neighborhood in Indianapolis, just north of the state fairgrounds. And, uh, you know, the older Homes that used to be suburban a long time ago, and now we're not anymore, kind of close together, kind of small, and, and uh, everybody had the lawns that were, some were nicer than others, but most of them were, were green grass and maybe a few plants, and there was this one house that had a jungle in the front yard. You've probably seen homes like this, where the person's really into plants, and Lillian was the name of the lady that lived there. And there were trellises, and there were hanging plants, and there were plants growing from the ground, and plants growing out. Of I don't know where they all came from. Um, getting to her front door was like taking a hike through the jungle. Lillian was a member of my congregation, so every once in a while I'd go to see her. It was, she had a bit of a hoarding issue, so not even sure there was going to be a place to sit when you went in there, but just a sweet lady. And Lillian, I soon found out, had been called by God to do a ministry. I'm not sure she'd have recognized that she was called by God. She probably just thought she was being nice. But I knew it as a call from the Lord because I watched what she did. Lillian loved to make soup, and she was good at it. And I'd watch and see where she went with a thermos of soup that day. And if I'd see Lillian come out of her house with that thermos, thermos and go to somebody's door, then I knew that was a person I probably needed to call on because they were either sick or they, there was a loss or, or there was some reason to pay a pastoral call on them. So I watched Lillian and I learned about ministry in that first full-time church by following and visiting the people that she took soup to. One example of a call. Many others, many of you have felt a calling. Maybe you didn't recognize it as God speaking to you, but you just felt an urge. Gosh, the trustees need help. I can volunteer to be on the trustees because I'm good with my hands and I understand building maintenance. Or, or wouldn't it be great to serve on the mission 
committee, the mission team, and, and, and figure out ways to help our church get out of its doors. There's some good ones coming, by the way. We, we talked in staff meeting last week about a really exciting program for the summer. You're going to hear more about it, and I just love this idea. These people are so creative, and they've got good ideas, and it's going to be fun. Um, maybe it's a small thing. Like I said, maybe you didn't, maybe you just felt an urge to go see a person you hadn't seen for a while. You got there and you had a good conversation. I did that last week. A member of the congregation took me to visit another member of the congregation, and, and they had been kind of lonely that people hadn't been coming to see them for a while. I think they, they got a lot out of our visit. We just did it to kind of keep in touch with them. Be nice, but it was so important to them, they kept saying over and over and over again. Maybe making a plate of cookies or a loaf of bread and taking it to somebody. You don't think much about it. It could be a call from God. I had my ministry saved by a plate of cookies. I was a youth pastor, had gone to work in a new town. I was in that church a year and it was about 10 months too long for them and for me both we just didn't mesh well and it wasn't that anybody was nasty or bad or anything like that we it just was one of those conflicted situations and as that grew and became worse well then then there were things said and accusations made that i don't think anybody really meant but they were hurtful and I was ready to quit I had pretty much made up my mind to go to the district superintendent and say take my name off the list I'm done but before I could do that it was a couple days after Christmas there was a blizzard happens a lot in Indiana and in the middle of that blizzard all this snow falling and and the wind is blowing the doorbell rings at the parsonage I'm thinking who is out on a night like this and I opened the door, and there was a woman. Her daughter, Jennifer, was a member of my youth group, and, and, uh, and I saw her quite often, you know, bringing the kids. And there was a neighbor boy next door, Nate. She would often come with her. So I knew she was Jennifer's mom. And she said, well, Pastor Larry, I just want to tell you through all this upheaval and conflict that I'm one of a bunch of parents of the youth in our church who really appreciate the time you spend with them. We appreciate the ministry you're giving them. And she handed me a plate of still warm Toll House cookies right out of the oven. And she doesn't know it, but those Toll House cookies kept me in the ministry. She just thought she was doing a small act of kindness. But she saved a pastor's ministry, and I was still in ministry for another 20 years. You don't know what might come of that little thing when you feel that tug in your heart, that little voice that says, go to this place, I'll show you what to do. Be like Abram. Get up and go. You could make all the difference. I'll invite you to stand and join in our closing hymn, number 356.
will invite you to, to remain after the benediction for our final act of worship, the closing voluntary. Now as you go forth, as you listen for God's voice and answer his call, may God be with you. May the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit accompany you as you go forth and bring you peace. Amen. Amen.